Hello, my first graders. Today we're on lesson 19. Okay, lesson 19. I'm going to go over our words to know first. Work, great, talk, paper, were, soon, laugh, done. One more time. Work, great, talk, paper, were, soon, laugh, done. Great. Let me just point out a couple things in our words. Um, I want to point out great has the grr sound at the beginning, but I want you to look at this because I know a lot of you are going to point out and say, oh, there's eat in the middle, but it's not greet, it's great. So this one doesn't really follow our rules. You would think it would have a long A here instead of the E-A. Talk. If you cover the T and the K, right, you see the A-L in the middle. We've talked about how A-L, right, A-L-L -L makes our all, but we said A-L also, you hear that as all in the middle of words. So you have t, all, k, talk. Paper, Ooh, p, and the E makes the A say its name, p, A, p, and then E-R has our er sound, right? E-R makes the er. Then we have were, Okay. This one's like you were a baby, okay? or um, the farmers were busy yesterday. It means it already happened. It happened in the past. Okay. Soon. Soon. Um, soon means like it's it hasn't happened yet, but it's coming up. Laugh. Laugh is a hard one to, to remember how to spell. Okay? It has that A-U-G-H in it. Laugh. It almost sounds like you would have an F in it, but it doesn't. Okay, so this is one right now you're just going to have to memorize. Laugh. Done. Okay, same thing. Something you have to memorize. Done. Doesn't Isn't spelled the way you would think. All right, so keep practicing those words. Here's a picture of our words and sentences, okay? If you go on to, again, our book room, Lesson 19 book room, you will see this is something that you can pull up and read, okay? It has all our words on it, okay? So explore our book room. Okay, read and comprehend. Um, so as we're reading, we're going to hear about Tomas Riviera, which I'll show you on the next page. And we're going to think about our story in order as we read. What happens first, next, last? That's going to help us understand our story. So preview our topic. People did many things long ago that we still do today. They went to school. They worked. Families had fun together. Today, we also do new things that people did not know about long ago. What do you do that your grandparents did not do as children? You will read about a boy and his grandpa in Tomas Riviera. So if you notice, and when we did social studies, right, this picture is um, from the past, and we can tell one by how the picture looks, right? It has that grayish cream color look to it. We can see by what the children are wearing, right? Okay, this little boy is wearing this outfit. It's different from what you would wear nowadays, right? Look at their clothes. It looks a little different. Um, a lot of people don't have, have smiles on their faces. When they took pictures, a lot of times they did not smile back in the day. Okay, you can see their teacher holding the flag. Okay, and notice that some of these kids, they look like they're different ages, but they were all in a classroom together, which is something we had talked about in social studies. Okay, so some things about the past are the same, and then there are some things that are different. So as we read, we're gonna hear some things that sound familiar, and there's gonna be some things that are different. Here is our cover page, our title page, Tomas Riviera. And this is Tomas right here. 
It's written by Jane Medina and illustrated by Renee King Moreno. Okay, and you can learn more about our authors on Think Central. Okay. This is uh, the story that we're reading today is a biography. A biography tells about a person's life. As you read, look for information about why the person is important. You also want to see about events in order. So my first graders, a biography is a real story. It tells a, about the life of a real person. A biography means that someone else was interested in a person and they decided to write about them. So Tomas Rivera is a real person. Jane decided that she wanted to write about him and so she wrote a, she wrote all about him. The things that you're going to hear about are true information. They are real, okay? So this is a nonfiction story, okay? It's giving us information or facts about Tomas Riviera and telling about his life. Biographies, oftentimes we can put in order. Usually when somebody tells about a person, they put their life events in order and that allows us to sequence them. Tell about what happens first in their life, next, then last. So as we read about Tomas Rivera, we're going to hear about his life in order. Okay, so again, it's a biography. It's going to tell us about his life. Now, as you can see from the cover page, usually when we have nonfiction stories, most of the time we've seen photographs. This is showing you that it doesn't have to be photographs. And I know you've heard me say that when we talked about fiction and nonfiction. It does not have to be photographs. Most of the time it is, but sometimes it's not. So in this case, they used drawings in their story instead of photographs for several reasons. It could be there's not a lot of photographs back then, which is true when you're writing about things that happened in the past. So sometimes things need to be drawn instead, and sometimes people just like to draw their own pictures. So, Tomas Riviera. Let's start up here. Tomas Riviera was born in Texas. Tomas and his family went from place to place picking crops. Let me stop for a second. Crops, my first graders, are fruits and vegetables, okay? So people go into a field and they pick the fruits or the, the vegetables that have been grown. So Tomas Riviera, he was born in Texas and his family, they went from place to place. So they traveled around after he was born picking crops. So that means they're picking the fruits and vegetables from a farmer's field. Okay, that's a job that people get paid to do, is pick crops. Tomas helped pick crops all day. It was a lot of work. When the work was done, Tomas would talk with his grandpa. So here's Tomas. Tomas was in the field all day as well, picking crops. So the whole family did it. Okay, grandma, mom, dad, and Tomas, all his whole family. They would pick the crops. So it looks like they're picking strawberries which is a fruit, okay? And then he would talk with his grandpa. Come quick, grandpa called. It's time for stories. You tell the best stories, Tomas said. I wish I could tell great stories too. So look at the time, right? This is in the evening when they're finished work and here's grandpa He's telling stories to Tomas. Did Tomas like hearing the stories? Yeah, because he says you tell great stories. He wants to tell great stories too, just like Grandpa. The next day, Grandpa said, we can get lots of stories for you, Tomas. When, asked Tomas. Quick, hop in, Grandpa said with a wink. I will show you. Grandpa drove the truck up the road. Okay, so Grandpa's telling him, we can get stories for you, lots of stories. I wonder where he's taking him. This is a library, said Grandpa. Look at all the books, gasped Tomas. 
Read all you can, Tomas. It will help you think of lots of stories, said Grandpa. So Grandpa took Tomas to a library. We have libraries, right? That's a place that you can go. What's at the library? The books, and in the books, they're, what did they call them? Lots of stories. So just like Grandpa tells all the stories, Tomas can hear even more stories from the library. And look what he says. It will help you think of, of lots of stories. So the more you read, the more things, the more ideas you get. There were lots of books for Tomas to read. Some were funny and made him laugh. He read about boats, trains, and cars. He dreamed of space. Soon Tomas was thinking of his own stories. So here's all the different kinds of books, right? He was reading all those different kinds of books. It was giving him ideas. And soon he was thinking of his own stories. So the books gave him ideas. And then look, he's thinking about what he read about. Tomas began telling his stories. Then he wrote them on paper. Let's stop for a second. So Tomas began telling his stories. So first, when you tell stories, you're telling them just by saying, saying things that are on your mind, just like Grandpa did when they sat around and he told stories. But after a while, look what he did. He wrote them down. So after he was telling stories, then he decided to write the stories down and read them the stories. When he was a grown-up, Tomas got a job as a teacher. He still wrote stories. Okay, so when he grew up, there he is. What's his job? He's a teacher. But not only is he a teacher, he still wrote stories. So he still spent time to write his stories down. Tomas Rivera's stories tell about people picking crops, just as his family did. Lots of people read his books. Mm. So Tomas, not only was he a teacher, but he wrote his stories down. He wrote about people picking crops. Why do you think he wrote about people picking crops? Yeah, because that's what his family did. Do you think he knows a lot about picking crops? Yeah, because he experienced that, right? So he did a lot of that growing up. So he was able to think about it and write that down, write books about that. So what do we call somebody who writes books? What's that called? The person who writes a story or person who writes a book? An author. So Tomas, not only is he a teacher, but he's also an author. He wrote books. Now, his name is on a big library. Many people go to the library. They get books just as Tomas did. Hey, so look at that. It says Tomas Riviera Library. Hmm. So that was the end of our story. I want you to think back. What do you think Tomas, why did somebody choose to write a book about Tomas? What was he famous for? What did he do that was special? Well, what was his job? He was an author, right? That was something that made him special. And he, a lot of people read his books, so that means he became a famous author. So much so that people put his name on a library, right? When you become famous, sometimes they put your name on things, right? They name streets after you, buildings and libraries, schools. So Tomas Riviera, in the end, he became famous and they put his name on a library. He was famous for his books. All right, so let's just take a look back at our story and we're going to try to tell it a little bit in order and think about what happened in the beginning. So first, it starts off telling us about where he was born, right? That he was born in Texas. Then what did he do as a kid? He picked crops and talked with grandpa. Then what did he do? Yeah, he listened to grandpa tell stories. 
Right? And so Grandpa took him to the library. And then what happened? What did Thomas start doing? He started reading a lot so he could tell his own stories and then he started to write them on paper. So he started telling stories out loud and then writing them down. And when he grew up, he became a teacher and an author. And at the end, we learned that they named a library after him. Right. So that's our story about Tomas Riviere. We learned why he's famous. Okay, so why somebody would want to write a biography about him. And we also talked about the story, what happened in his life, the events that happened. And again, remember, this is a real story. So please take time this week to go into Think Central to read your story on your own. Right? We want to practice reading our story okay? and take a closer look at the pictures and think about what you're reading as you go.